It's Monday, July 23rd, as Siri just had to tell me, 2018. I'm on my way home from Maxdoc, and this is the start of a really long Guy's Daily Drive. It started out as a pretty nice day. I mean, there wasn't much in the way of clouds. The sun was out. It was like mid-70s, so, you know, low humidity, not super hot. And now it's getting overcast, and I'm thinking it's going to rain for too much longer. Certainly before I get home, unless I manage to scoot out from under whatever it is that I'm, I'm underneath here. <sighs> now I'm on my way home from, from Max Stock, and that's, that's always a little sad. And when I think about how I, how I do these trips, I, I have to really kind of question whether or not I'm just a little nuts about driving because it, you know, I left last Wednesday, and then got to uh, Woodstock on Thursday. So there's two days, and then the Max Stock Expo was uh, that Friday night. So I had all day Friday before uh, anything really happened with Max Stock. All day Saturday, all day Sunday, and then Monday morning. I'm on my way back home again. So out of seven days that I'm gone from home, I spend four of them driving. Sorry about that. Uh, Actually, and I spend a good part of Friday driving as well. Uh, As I told you guys, I went to pick up uh, Dr. Mac at the airport, and things didn't really quite go as planned with that because originally... I was going to pick them both up and, you know, their flights were like about an hour apart, so it wasn't that bad. But then, because of some of the delays that uh, that both Dr. Mack had, and especially what uh, Kelly, Kelly Gumont had, she was like two hours delayed, and maybe a little more, and uh, Dr. Mack was like about a half hour. But it ended up being like a two hour, more than two hour delay, not delay, but break between his flight and her flight. So when he got in, you know, I asked him, I said, well, you know, why don't we just go ahead and take you back, take you back to Woodstock so that he didn't have to wait around for, you know, actually so that we both didn't have to just sit around and wait for two hours while uh, Kelly's flight was coming in. So that's what we did. I took him, and you know, yeah, it was a little bit more of a pain in the, pain in the neck for me. But I took, um, I took Bob Levitis to his hotel, or our, the same hotel I was in. And then I went ahead and headed back to O'Hare Airport, which, you know, it's like an hour each way. So, you know, an hour there, bringing him back an hour, going back out there an hour bringing her back an hour so I spent like uh, spent like four hours <sighs> sorry I know that's, that's you know ever since I got this car and you know, I love this car I'm really really enjoying this car Sirius XM has been giving me the bums rush to sign up for their service and I don't want it I don't need it. Between what I have in my own music collection, what I have in uh, podcasts, and what I get with uh, Apple Music and a free Spotify account, you know, I mean, sure, there are there are some things that that Sirius could do 
for, especially for like long car rides like this. They could, you know, I could just turn on a comedy channel and blah, 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 blah. But it's not worth, because I, I don't take that many long trips like this. And it's not worth spending another 10 to $20 a month for yet another content service that I'm not really going to get that much use from. You know, I, I, I know this is completely off, off topic, but I have Netflix, and that's $11, $12 a month, but I use it, and I use it a lot. And I enjoy a lot of the original content that they that they have that you can't see anywhere else. I enjoy uh, the selection of movies and TV shows. And then there's uh, Amazon Prime, which costs it's 100 bucks or so a year. And the same kind of thing. You know, they've got a bunch of movies you can watch. You know, if you want to, there's a bunch of movies you can and TV shows that you can buy. Um, I've gone on a weird binge lately with two shows. Uh, one is on Amazon, and it's an old... Well, old is relative, I guess. A uh, TV show that was, apparently was based on a concept that Gene Roddenberry had called Andromeda. And it stars Kevin Sorbo, who used to play um, Hercules and a bunch of other people and it's it's not that good a show it's really it's really not it's, it's the, the writing is is subpar uh, a lot of times the things that that they have these characters do don't really make any sense in in context to what these characters have done before and it, it's really kind of a way for the, the creators of the show to jump on the, the Star Trek bandwagon. You know, Gene Roddenberry, of course, being so closely associated with Star Trek, and it's the, one of the executive producers of the show was Michelle Barrett, his wife, who played Nurse Chapel in the original show, and she was actually in the original pilot with Jeffrey Hunter. She was the second in command. She was the first officer. So, you know, I, I, I don't begrudge people for using his name, but yeah, I really can't imagine that beyond just kind of a general outline, that Gene Roddenberry had anything to do with the creation of this show. So they use his name to kind of go, wow, look, this is a show that, that Gene Roddenberry had something to do with. When Honestly, there's probably very little that Gene Roddenberry did in the way of, of creating this show. Certainly not before he died. So, of course, it follows that he couldn't have done that much after he died either. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you know, it's, it's like, okay, you want, you want to put his name on And there's another one with his name on it. Uh, I don't know who produced it. Something Assignment Earth or Battlefield Earth or I don't know, something along those lines. It's Gene Roddenberry, so his name is associated with that too. <sighs> so let me tell you what's going on so far. I know I'm kind of all over the place here. But, uh, oh, big bump. I left, uh, I, I met, um, Bob Levitis about 6 a.m. downstairs. We ate a little breakfast. And he has, he, uh, let's see, you know, he wouldn't have left yet. He had a 10.30 flight out of O'Hare. And because Chicago traffic is notoriously bad, we wanted to make sure that he had more than enough time, you know, to give him that two-hour window before the flight to, uh, to get there. So we had some breakfast and packed up the car, and we were on the road by quarter after six. Dropped him off at O'Hare at about 7.30. So, you know, a little, it took a little more time, and there was a little bit of traffic. But honestly, it wasn't that bad. I had more trouble getting away from O'Hare Airport 
onto the route that I wanted to take to go home than I did getting him to O'Hare Airport from Woodstock. So the route I'm taking to go home is the same route that I took to get to Woodstock, where I take the southerly route, um, you know, leaving Chicago and then getting on 65, I-65, which is where I am right now. I'm headed toward Indianapolis, which is, at this point, about 130 miles, I guess, 120 miles away. Uh, I won't be quite getting that close. The thing is, with Siri and, you know, because when I left O'Hare Airport, I wasn't really sure what route, if if I just told it to take me home, I wasn't sure what route it was going to try to force me to go into. And I wanted to take the same route home that I did getting here. So what I did is I put in Indianapolis as my target instead of Virginia, where I live. And that worked. That routed me through all the various little roads that I needed to get onto to uh, to head toward Indianapolis, which is where I am right now. And the next time I stop, I'm going to stop before I get to Indianapolis to gas up. I have about 130 miles range in the tank right now, which would just about get me to Indianapolis, but I'll stop before I hit, like, their little beltway that goes around the city, fill up, and then continue on, and once I fill up, I'll go ahead and put in uh, my home address as, you know, the route that I wanted to go, and that should get me onto all the roads that I need to be on to get back to Virginia. Yeah, so that's that's where I am this morning. I know I, I didn't really talk much about uh, some of the fun things that happened at MacStock. I will do that in the next Guy's Daily Drive that I'll be doing probably in a few hours. And, you know, because I've done... I've done... Uh, I did two Wednesday, two Thursday, two on Friday... And I have most of those posted already. I did a couple of uh, live casts. And here I am talking about what I did at MaxDoc. So never mind. If you'd like to get a hold of me, <laughs> best way to reach me is to contact me via email. My email address is guy at mymac.com, probably. You can also reach me on the Twitters. My Twitter handle there is MacParrot. And uh, this is the part where I shill Mac stock, but there's not much point because it's over for this year. Uh, Mike did announce the dates for next year, and the venues are already booked, so we know exactly when that's going to take place. And uh, I'll, I'll have to look in my, my calendar. It's, it's like the last weekend of July in 2019. So we'll see. Uh, You can also watch some of the other crazy things that I do. Besides Guy's Daily Drive, I do a podcast every weekend with uh, Mr. Gary Gazmaz Malpaz. We've been doing the MyMac.com podcast for well over nine years. And every Wednesday night, you can find me on the Facebooks where I do... Oh, another little Mac show called Mac to the Future, typically with Mr. Warren Sklar, though uh, he hasn't been available the last couple of weeks. So I'll be looking at a, you know, a few other people to fill in when he can't be on. Uh, I actually, you know, again, something I was, I was going to start talking about Mac stock, and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that this one, for this one. So I hope you will catch me next time on Guy's Daily Drive.